This week at ADA, I got to talk to Dexcom CEO Kevin Sayer about some big announcements coming from Dexcom, direct to Apple Watch, and a brand new CGM. Let's check it out. Kevin. Good to see you again. You too. The last time we saw each other was like a couple months ago in San Diego for the yes, Dexcom G7 weekend. Lovely weekend, and it's great to see you again today for... It's great to have you back. It's great to have the ADA convention in San Diego this year. My first one. I'm very happy to be here. And I've heard of some cool announcements from Dexcom we got to talk about. We've had a great weekend. Yeah, so let's first start with the one I know a lot of my viewers want to hear. Direct to watch. We heard you said something about that coming this year. Before the end of the year. Is there anything else you could tell us about direct to watch? I can just tell you it's been a lot of work. And there, the way the Bluetooth signal, I'm not an engineer to explain it properly, but the way the Bluetooth signal works with the phone and, and phone iOS is not the same way it works with watch iOS. I think the takeaway for Dexcom users is we can talk to three things at the same time. So while direct to watch is important, it's good, you still have the safety of your phone, you still have the safety of your insulin pump if that's what you choose, or your receiver if you have that as one of your three things. Uh, but it, it'll be ready, and I, I did that to a large extent. I talked to the technical team and our chief technology officer said, announce that, we're getting that done. I said, okay, I will announce it, so we'll get it done. Yes. Now, I've had a lot of parents ask me if their child is out playing their soccer game, they have it connected, they have the internet ability on their watch. I have a Wi-Fi one, but there are ones that connect to the internet. Will a parent be able to see their numbers from afar? I, I don't know the answer okay. to that one, okay. uh, as I said here. I would hope so, and someday certainly, but I don't know what the answer is to the first, okay. the first try. Great, now you also announced a new sensor for people who aren't insulin dependent. Can you tell me about that? We have been watching what's going on in the world with respect to glucose sensing very closely. And as you listen to the data here that's been presented, there's several posters and studies of people with type 2 diabetes who are on insulin who are benefiting tremendously from CGM use. That group of individuals, we believe, needs a better tailored experience than what we have for our insulin users and, and the type one community. We're never going away from the insulin using community. Let me be very clear, and I get that question a lot. Well, if you go make this, you're not gonna make stuff run. No, that will never be the case. But an accurate glucose sensor is a very valuable tool for that large population. You know, there's 25 million people not on insulin with diabetes, and there's another 100 plus million in the US, according to the things we read, with prediabetes. We want to create an experience that will address that market, and we announced that we're going to do that and launch that product next year. So we're working on what that experience is. It will utilize, certainly, the accuracy and performance of a G7 sensor system. We also said that will be a 15-day product and our first extended wear product uh, coming out. So that's what we're looking at. That We expect that to come out the end of next year. Or not the end of next year, but in the second half of next year is when revenues would start to come in, and we are working on that now towards its launch and filing. We're very excited about it. Yeah, and I know that that sensor, you said, has a 15-day wear. Yes, it does. Will we see a 15-day wear come to the G7 at the same time? Are they... Are they no. No, okay. And, and, and I'll walk you through that a little bit. Uh, we, we know the, the G7, even the G6, will last longer than 10 days for many individuals. But we have a very high level of reliability that we establish for ourselves. And we want that experience to be extremely reliable. We don't want to replace a bunch of sensors. As we get out to extended life, particularly for somebody whose glucose goes up and down a tremendous amount, we don't want to create an experience where people are returning all their sensors after 13 and a half days or, or 12 and a half days or whatever. We're gonna watch very closely with this uh, non-insulin using product, how our 15 day use goes. We also have a program that I talked about in my speech where we have a scientific based extended wear sensor that has got some different features than the current G7 that we will start the clinical study on before the end of this year. And that sensor will definitely be for our, our, our insulin using base. We expect 90% plus reliability. We expect an MARD that starts with a seven that may go down to a six and we may even see that sensor last longer than 15 days, depending upon tape, really, more than, 
than sensor life and also commercial models. So we, I, I announced all those things at the conference and all the engineers kind of, wow, we're really going to do this, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Wow. And for those of you who don't know, an MARD, that's MARD, it's an acronym for something I, I don't for know. Accuracy. Often. Yeah, it's yeah. for accuracy. Mean so. average relative difference. So within 7% high or low across the board. Yeah, so the, the lower the number, the better. The better. Now with this new CGM, is it, is it only for people like with type two diabetes or maybe hypoglycemia, or is it, do you see this being used by people who don't even have diabetes? So our first pass, you know, all sensors right now are labeled for people with diabetes. So we have a regulatory pass to get through that's a little different than what we've done in the past. So I don't know what will be labeled. Our focus will initially be people with type two diabetes who are not on insulin. Now the Medicare coverage expansion that we just got covers type two patients on basal insulin only, and also type two patients who suffer from severe hypoglycemic episodes. So they would not use this product that we're coming out with next year. They'd be eligible for coverage in the G series and that's what they should get because of the hypo alarm features and those things. This product is gonna be configured differently. It's not gonna have a hypo alarm. And, and it's not gonna have a hypo alert. It, it's gonna be more coaching and data to how to be healthier, how to comply with your medication. And you know, if you don't take your meds, you'll see what happens. Um, lifestyle, people with type two diabetes are more concerned about the advancement of the disease than they are about today of the disease. Or somebody like yourself, you've got to deal with this every day. You got to deal with the advancement, you got to deal with it every day. For this population, it's more, I don't want this thing to advance. I don't want to go through those steps of metformin, then another drug, and another drug, and another drug, and now I'm on insulin, and now I'm they, 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 they need information. And these people, for years, they've gone to the doctor and they hear the same thing. Eat less, exercise more, take your meds. Well, how do we know if that works? The only way you know if that works is if you wear a sensor. You don't learn it through finger sticks. You, you don't learn it through, I just feel better, but you learn a lot through a sensor. We've seen a, you know, one of the other things we talked about in our presentations. In some of these type two patient populations, we've seen weight loss when weight loss isn't even an outcome. In our, uh, our, our basal trial, in, the, uh, uh, in, in that trial, we saw 5% weight reduction in basal insulin only type two users in the mobile study. We weren't even looking for that. And when you go on insulin or increase insulin, you usually gain more weight. These people with centers actually had a 5% weight loss, which is a good thing. And so we think that can be an outcome over time and, and people get healthier from a cardiovascular perspective and things like that. So we'll look for other outcomes and other things that relate to sensor use over an extended period of time in this patient population. Okay, now with this new sensor, how are people gonna get it? Is this something you go through your insurance? I saw, I saw something we started about- off with, we, we will start off with the cash pay option and then okay. over time see what evidence we have to develop for insurance reimbursement. Okay, and, and where pharmacies, is that where these Again, are gonna we'll, be sold? We'll, we haven't disclosed that yet. Okay. We're, we're working on those plans as well. Okay, now I always get asked from people all around the world when can I get G7? Can I get G7? I know that you are expanding globally and you've made some advancements in that. Can you tell me a little bit about G7, where? Yeah, G7 has been launched certainly in the US. Uh, it's not launched with our integrated pump users yet. Uh, Tandem and Insulet are both working rapidly on their, their integrations uh, and they're making great progress. For everybody else, G7 is available in the US and we have been very successful in advancing the reimbursement curve for people with insurance to get G7 like almost immediately. We thought that process was gonna take nine months, it literally took three. We've got G7 into almost all the insurance plans now and for Medicare patients as well. And so that is available in the US. We've launched in, I think it's double digit countries outside the US now. We've had two waves of launches and those, those have happened and, and we've got a third wave scheduled before the end of the year. So most of the major countries, uh, we've got um, Canada, I think will be first of the year uh, is, is what we're planning on approval. Certainly we're talking with regulatory people up there now. Uh, Japan will be sometime next year, earlier rather than later. So we've got, G7 is getting out quicker than G6 did. Uh, it's getting out very rapidly, we're very excited about it. When did the G6 come out? Just curious. 2018 okay. was wow. when it launched, and it took us a while 
to roll th through all the geographies for a couple of reasons. One, we weren't as advanced with sensors. You know, these regulatory bodies and reimbursement bodies weren't thinking as much about sensors then as they do now because it's so much more widespread. Number two for us, we had to control the launch because we sold everything that came off the line. G6 grew so rapidly in our biggest G6 lesson that we learned going to G7 is we had to make sure we could make enough of them. So I, I, a perfect example of things we announced at, at our investor day. I'm wearing a G7 sensor now that was manufactured in our new Malaysia manufacturing plant. We, are, we can now manufacture sensors there and we have capacity to make many, many sensors in Malaysia and the ability to build even more lines there and add to that process. So we're not launching G7 with the constraints we had capacity-wise with G6. Our biggest constraint in the U.S. market and most of the markets now is integration with our pump partners. And when, when that happens, we think it'll go very quickly to that user base as well. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who are on systems with Tandem and Omnipod 5 really want to get their hands on G7, but they're they waiting. Do. Those companies have, have announced. To. Yeah, they, they know they're working on it actively. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're ready for it. I know, so yeah. am I. Yeah, well, Kevin, thank you so much. This was great, and I think in a few months we'll, we're going to get back together and we're, we're going to talk about Dexcom G8, so stay tuned. Take care. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I've got a lot more coming from ADA on this YouTube channel and my podcast, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and give it a like. I'm Justin, and I'll take you later.